This is exciting to be back. Um, so I'm doing a good job of figuring out, like when I'm in the place of like my morning meditation, when I'm really in alignment, I'm really relaxed, things are good, I know what that feels like. And I know what it feels like when I'm running up the stairs and I trip and I fall and I bang my shin and then things are not going well. I know the, that feeling. And I think I've developed some tools on both ends to get, to kind of mind my vibration. There's a middle part that I'm struggling with. Tools other than being aware that you're not really in the satisfying mode and catching it before much momentum gets going? Right. Words, or is it tools to do something about it once you do catch it? Or is it tools to catch it in the early stages? It, it, it's a little bit of both. I think in the beginning, I know, I know what it feels like. I can meditate. I can mind that early, easy vibration part. I know how to wake up and get going and be generally yeah. pretty good. But then when life comes at you, as it does, life is demonstrating to you all day long what your vibrational mix is. What a lovely gift that is. Because you want to know what your mix is, don't you? Yeah. So there's two ways you could know. Your emotions will tell you or falling up the stairs will tell you. It seems like the emotions are further down the road than I want to catch it. I think I want to find something finer. Let's say something different. My sensitivity to my emotions could be better. I could be more sensitive to my emotions so I could catch it in the earlier subtle stages. You know how you do that? When you spend time every day, 15 or 20 minutes is enough. When you spend time in meditation so that you acknowledge what the receptive mode feels like, then the more aware and alert you are to that sensation, the more less satisfying emotions will stick out like sore thumbs. And you'll catch them in the earlier stages. Okay. That's so, the key. So more meditation time, more, more time. Not more meditation time, just every day for 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're talking about here today is about you tuning yourself so that you consciously know what satisfaction feels like. If you're not really aware of what it feels like to be satisfied, you might find yourself in a conversation that is unsatisfying and maybe not even notice it. And sometimes it's a subject that just has a lot of momentum, so it feels normal. It feels normal and justified and practical. And you're really going to like this. We've been saying it for years, but not like this. You're always under the influence. Did you hear us say that? It's just going to make you some bumper stickers. <laughs> under the influence. You'll, be, you'll see a lot of policemen by the side of the road. <laughs> under the influence. So you're always under the influence of something. So let's say that you haven't been really paying attention and you've rendezvoused with some people and they're not particularly satisfied. In fact, they might even be complaining or noticing something in life, commenting on something that's happening globally or nationally or in the community or in their own life experience. And as they begin to talk about it and you begin to listen, you fall under their influence because you're always under the influence of something. Just like if you're in your car and your radio's on, it's set on some station. You're tuned to something. What is it? So let's say in this example that you're not under the influence of pure positive energy. You're not tuned in, tapped in, turned on, but you're tuned to something that is less satisfying. And as you're tuned to something that is less satisfying, you might even be finally become aware of it, but you're already tuned there. It's hard in the moment to change the station, to change the frequency. And so we want to say it's more about what you prepare in advance and how well you maintain it than it is life coming at you and you having a knee-jerk response to it and then trying to pivot away from your knee-jerk response. That's really the hard way to go about it. And we're going to say something to you. We love you so much. You know what's coming next. Most of you are under the influence of people who are around you because they're vivid, they're alive, you're translating them through your physical senses, they're real, and they're talking, and they've got opinions, and they're entertaining, and they're coming at you all the time. So it's not an easy thing when you're in this world observing what's going on to tend to your own vibration. You have to do it on purpose. You have to know what satisfaction feels like and what dissatisfaction feels like, and you have to care about which one you're in, and then you have to practice satisfaction until under any and all conditions, you can feel satisfied. 
Sometimes there are issues that are just big, 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 big. And no matter how practiced you are at alignment, you might know when I focus there, it's going to take me from my alignment. And we would not make that sacrifice. I think you're right because I, I realize that sometimes when it's when I start to pick up inertia and then I'll I, what I do is get in the bathtub and I start to play a game where I think okay what do I prefer or what do I appreciate in my life and I just start rant naming things off and really and good. that pulls me out and that's amazing but I can't live my life always in the bathtub <laughs> as nice as that would be um, we've been saying for a long time that we would rather see you in a state of appreciation than in a state of meditation because you can't meditate all the time either. You want to be out in the world collecting data. And further, this is an important thing also. We said to you, step one is ask. Contrast helps you do that. Step two is source answers. That's not your work. Step three is to want to feel good and get in the receptive mode. That really is your dominant work. Step four is being really good at that. Odd that we would make step four just being really good at step three. We thought it was worth it. Just get really good at it. And step five is, life has come at you. You're living in the real world. You see something that you don't like, and you feel the negative emotion. But even though you feel the negative emotion, you're really not mad at yourself because you know this new experience and new contrast and new territory is what's causing you to give birth to a new desire. And that's the expansion that you are eternally always going to be about. So we're not for a moment trying to talk you out of never having negative emotion. We just want you to know what it means. We want you to manage it. We want you to realize that negative emotion means that I'm not vibrating as resistance free as I could. And I mean to do something about it and then do as much as you can right then and there if you can. But most of all, don't struggle and strain against it. When you are in the receiving mode, your leverage that comes from that alignment, it's massive. The leverage of alignment, the power of alignment is huge. It's worth going for. It's, it's big, and that, that's something that I learned the last time we spoke. It was really, that, that's been part of my effort, is, or part of my... I've been practicing that more, being in that, that place of alignment. So help me understand why... So let's talk about the ground that we've covered here. It sounds simplistic to say it's, it really is simple as being satisfied rather than dissatisfied. But aren't you really getting how turning of your mind in that way will cause you to maybe be there more? And won't that change your point of attraction? And won't then the new manifestations that you are witnessing be evidence of the change? And then won't it be more easy for you to now believe in that? You see what we're getting at? We're not asking you to dig up your beliefs and change them. We're asking you to just bridge them and let old unhelpful beliefs just dwindle away while you accentuate the beliefs that are really serving you by allowing your connection and therefore your impulses to let you be influenced by your inner being who is in the process of gathering the cooperative components, you being one of them in this case. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why, when I'm trying to fine tune that vibration, why it shifts so fast sometimes? Ye yesterday getting here was the most bizarre experience and I. Everything went wrong, but everything was perfectly right. And I came and I landed at this, like right in the spot, in the seat I should have been. But it was so much harder than it this needed to be. This is a little bit what we were talking about, about the universe surprising and delighting you. Because sometimes things you think you wouldn't choose are the base points of launching you into things you really would choose. And so a certain element of trust is helpful to you, just an expectation that things really are going my way, that things really are working out for me. No matter how it looks in any moment in time, my trend is, it's, it's a little like the stock market. Follow the trends, not what happened today. It's this average vibration. It's, what is your point of attraction? Is my life mostly satisfying? It is. Your lives are mostly satisfying just because the sun comes up every morning. That ought to be enough, you greedy buggers. Earth keeps spinning in its orbit. That's huge. When you compare that to everything else on your list, get over it. There's so much to be satisfied. 
your economy, the movement of dollars, the way your resources move around, your access to food and well-being. In other words, there is so much going so well for so many. So if you just step back far enough to remember that and let that be your basis, whether you're thinking globally or nationally or even personally, even personally, as many things as you might have to worry about or to complain about, there's way more that you could be satisfied. It's funny because, not really funny, it's funny. You're not laughing, but it's so funny. It's funny. It's funny. People say, well, how will I know? And we say, well, you'll feel good. And it's funny to us that we have to explain that the reason your guidance system works is because it feels good to feel good. That's why you want to do it. It feels good to feel good. So it's like the very thing that your guidance is feels good. Feels good. Oh, well, then I'll do it. If it'll get me to where I want to be, then I'll do it. Well, yeah, but in the meantime, you'll feel really good. Well, all right, as long as I get to where I'm going. But you'll feel good. You'll feel good. I, I heard you the first time. I acknowledge I will feel good if I get into the receiving mode. I will feel good. But then I'll get what I want. We say, you're always in some point of manifestation. Why not just decide that your intention, your goal, is to feel good? That's what you're here for, for the joy of feeling good. And I have a lot to feel good about. Enough? Thank you. Really good. Thank you.